Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about one of the things that always comes up, and it has to do with people talking about having a problem with a movement pattern, or uh, again, a movement pattern deficiency or compensatory strength issues, and what people need to remember is that these are basically just a form of weakness. These are muscular weakness. That's what causes these issues. And, and I mean, some of the things that we're talking about here, let me give you a perfect example. If you're really strong at narrow stance, squatting and deadlifting and stuff, but then when you go wide, people say, oh yeah, well I just like flexibility or I have a movement pattern issue with, with going out wider. No, you don't. You're just weak. And I'm not saying you're weak all the way around, but you obviously have some extremely weak muscles involved in as far as your adductors, your abductors, uh, maybe certain parts of your quad down near the knee. You have muscles that are weak because you haven't trained them. And even mobility issues are largely an issue of muscular weakness. People say, well, what do you mean? Well, if you lack mobility, say, at the bottom of a bench press, or you lack mobility at the bottom of a squat, well, what does that mean? It means the muscles are weak, because what is mobility? Mobility is your ability to display strength near the terminal ends on a range of motion of a joint. All right, flexibility and mobility are two separate things. All right, flexibility is your ability to actually move. It's how far you can move a joint. All right, that is what flexibility is. What your range of motion physically is just with an empty piece of weight, a PVC pipe, a, a wooden dowel. All right, that's, that's your flexibility as far as even these weights or anything goes. How far can you move, physically move a joint under no resistance? Your mobility is how strong you are near the ends. So if you get down into a squat, and let's say you could do 300 pounds, one inch above parallel, but when you get three inches below that or two inches below parallel, you go three inches deeper, all of a sudden your 200 pounds turns into 225 or 150. Like you just have no strength near the bottom. That's a strength issue. Not a flexibility issue. It's a strength issue. Now, it could be largely due to the fact that you haven't trained those muscles. You haven't trained that range of motion. But if you haven't trained a certain range of motion at all and the muscles themselves are weak at that point, it's a muscular weakness. You have individual muscles involved with that movement pattern that are underdeveloped. Or you can have individual muscles involved that are just fiber uh, joint angle specific inside of a given muscle. Because when you look at the different muscle fibers you have, if you take something really, really simple, let's take a bicep. That's the most simple muscle you could come up with. Which is why people who come up with five different bicep exercises are basically mentally deficient. Right. Only a mentally deficient person looks at a biceps and thinks you would benefit from five different movements. It doesn't have a lot of functions. It's a very, very, very simple muscle. Probably one of the simplest muscles you will ever train. All right. Yes, you have muscle fibers through the bicep that work the entire range of motion of the elbow flexor. Right Now, obviously, it has the, the shoulder involved also. That's one of the, the movements of one of the heads the bicep, which makes it a little more complex than we might make it out to be. But, let's just say the elbow flexing part. All right, you have muscle fibers through the bicep that can work through the entire range of motion. But you also have muscle fibers in there, a few of them that are specific to different joint angles. So you have muscle fibers that maybe only work when you're at the very bottom. You have muscle fibers that only work in the middle, and muscle fibers that only work when you're contracted up at the top. Now, that comprises a fairly small amount of the muscle fibers through the bicep. Most, most of the muscles in the, in the bicep can contract throughout the range of motion pretty effectively. But every muscle is going to have fibers specific to certain parts of the range of motion. Well, you're going to, you might have muscle fibers that you just have in hypertrophy. Because when I say they're weak, what do we mean? It's hypertrophy. Where does a muscle itself get its strength? It gets its strength from its size. When we think of strength on complex movements, we're dealing with neuromuscular things happening. We're dealing with, with neuromuscular efficiency, coordination, support musculature, all of that. But when you start talking about 
the contractile force that a muscle produces, like if you lock it into a machine, you lock a bicep down, like you lock your arm into a machine to where you cannot move your body. It holds you perfectly still, and the only thing you can move is your elbow. Hypertrophy becomes like almost the only factor that determines how much force your bicep will produce in that environment. Okay? It is almost the only factor that will determine how much weight you move. It will be, for one individual, it will be a direct, almost one-to-one correlation between fiber hypertrophy and how much weight they can move on that machine. All the other stuff seems to only apply when we start getting into movement patterns that involve more than one joint. Right? Hypertrophy is everything for single joint strength. It's literally like 95% of your strength, if not more. So when we say that you're weak at that point, it means you haven't hypertrophied the muscle fibers involved. So a muscular weakness is a muscular development issue. So when people start talking about, I need to fix a movement pattern, I need to fix this mobility issue, they have some deficiency. No, it's, it's muscular weakness. You are weak at that pattern. You are weak at that range of motion. You have muscles and muscle fibers that you have not appropriately developed. They're either underdeveloped entirely or you haven't developed them proportionate to your strength. All right? And that is one reason that we need to be doing these different movements. This is one reason that we need to be good at being wider, being narrower, different positions, different angles. Because this is all part of muscular development. And this is also why I point out, and, and most coaches point out, that someone who is extremely well-developed muscularly, top to bottom, tends to not have strength weaknesses anywhere. That's usually your, the characteristic we're looking for. And I don't mean just a, a bodybuilder top to bottom. Because a lot of bodybuilders neglect a lot of muscles, and you just see the show muscles. All right. Muscular development through every movement pattern, not only makes you more jacked, it makes you more functional and strong. So people need to, to understand that when we talk about movement deficiencies, you're essentially talking about muscular weakness. You're talking about lack of hypertrophy of certain muscle fibers or certain muscles. That's what's causing that. So it's not just a, a muscle strength issue, because we could say, oh yeah, yeah, it's about strength, it's about strength. But when you understand how strength and hypertrophy overlap, really it's a muscular development issue. You have underdeveloped muscles that are making you weak at certain movements. And it could be anything from a unilateral. It could be a support musculature as far as hips. It could be the medial head of your tricep. It could be your interior deltoids. It could be all sorts of stuff involved. It could be one of the foreheads of your quadricep. It could be part of your hamstring development. But generally speaking, when you have a movement pattern issue, as people talk about it, it is essentially a muscular development and strength thing. It means that you have muscles that need additional hypertrophy. And sometimes the only way to get that hypertrophy is to sometimes work that terminal end of the range of motion. Right? It means you have planes and ranges of motion that you haven't effectively trained. And if you go through and correct those, you go through and correct those, all of a sudden this movement pattern problem goes away because it's not a movement issue, a hypertrophy issue. And it develops from bad training. It develops from bad programming. It develops from using the wrong exercise variations. It develops from not training what you need to train. And usually the biggest examples we see, and a perfect example is, is what I gave of people who only train narrow with their footing. That's a perfect example. Okay. People who only do narrow stance squatting, narrow stance deadlifting, narrow stance everything. They tend to have enormous muscular weaknesses in their lower body, which then gets developed as a, hey, I have a movement pattern deficiency. And they'll blame it on levers, they'll blame it on leverages and everything else. But no, it's just that they're weak. 
they're not weak everywhere. They might be strong in 80% of the muscles in their body, but that other 10 to 20% are underdeveloped. And that's exactly what's happening. All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.